Hi and welcome to another Wadgeek video. Today we'll be doing a tutorial for the GW B5600. This tutorial also covers the all metal squares, the GMW B5000, since the modules are pretty much the same with the only difference being the screen technology. Now, as usual with all my other tutorial videos, in the description you will find a table of content with time codes, so you can jump to specific parts of the video or functions of the watch, since these videos do tend to be a bit long. However, I would advise you to watch the whole thing the first time, just so you get acquainted with all the functions that this watch has. Now, this is a solar, atomic and Bluetooth hybrid. What that means is that this watch is self-charging, so you will never have to change the battery as long as you wear it normally. And if you want to store it for longer periods of time, avoid storing it in complete darkness, like a drawer or a box. Instead, just leave it outside at regular ambient room, uh, room lighting and it's gonna be okay. Now the other two technologies, the Atomic and Bluetooth, means that this watch is also self-charging. And it has two options of, uh, not self-charging, self-adjusting. And it has two options of adjusting itself. Well, three if we count in the manual adjustment. Now to manually adjust the watch, all you have to do is press this adjust button and you will enter the adjusting mode where you tell the watch what your home city is, the time, date, and everything. And I'll show you that, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. The second option is the atomic reception. With that, all you have to do is enter the adjusting mode and tell the watch the home city. And then it's going to automatically connect to any of the six towers in the world overnight and update its hours, minutes, dates, and the DST settings, meaning it will automatically switch between winter, winter time and summer time. You can also initiate a manual atomic reception, which is also something I will show you in a couple of minutes. And the third option is the Bluetooth connectivity. What that means is that once you pair this watch to a phone, it's going to stop being an atomic. So when you receive this watch, it first starts off as a regular solar atomic G-Shock. However, once you pair it with the phone, it's going to stop being an atomic watch and instead it's going to connect to your phone up to four times a day at 6 a.m. and 12 a.m. and 6 p.m. and 12 p.m. Now, if for some, and all you have to do is have the watch paired to your phone the first time and have the blue, have Bluetooth running on your phone and be within the range, which is a couple of meters. Now, in case your phone is out of the range or you have your Bluetooth turned off, or I don't know, you lost your phone or something, once the watch has more than one day of unsuccessful uh, connections, meaning more than four unsuccessful connections, it's going to switch back to being an atomic watch. So that's pretty cool. It will try one, if it fails, it's going to go back to the other. And then again, once you pair it, it's going to turn off the atomic function and start being a Bluetooth function only. Now, I highly advise you to use the Bluetooth connectivity and to really pair it to your phone because it makes setting up all the functions very easy and intuitive and also it unlocks some well, Bluetooth specific functions like the flight log function and also the reminder function. But let's now cover the home screen and how to set up the watch initially. So to manually set up the time, and that's the first thing that we're going to do, all you have to do while in the home screen and to get into the home screen, you use the mode button to cycle back to the home screen. In case you're anywhere else, pressing and holding the mode button for more than two seconds is going to switch back to the home screen. Okay, once in the home screen, press and hold the adjust button for the watch to enter the, the setting of the, of the time. And now we're going to mess up the time on purpose just so you can see how it corrects itself once it connects to the phone because that's the last thing that we're going to show you. Okay, so now the first thing that the watch is going to ask you is your home city. And you have to select this one correctly if you want the watch to connect to the correct uh, tower. Because once you select your home city, let's say in my case it's Paris, not only will it uh, affect the world times displayed, but it's also going to tune the watch to the correct frequency for the tower that's available. So if you mess this thing up, the watch is not going to work correctly. But since we do want to mess it up, we'll move to, I don't know, let's put it to Hong Kong. Fine. Pressing the mode button is going to cycle you through different things that you adjust and these two buttons 
help you change the value. So you can go up, you can go down, and if you have to toggle something on or off, you use the lower button. Okay, pressing the mode, the watch is gonna ask us for the DST or daylight savings time. So this is where you switch between summertime and wintertime. Or if you leave it at auto, the watch is gonna do it automatically. You toggle it with the lower button, on, off, or auto. Pressing the mode button again takes us to the seconds reset. And here, by using the lower button, you can reset the seconds. If you reset them before 30 seconds, so between 0 and 29, the seconds are going to reset and the minutes are going to stay unchanged. If, however, you reset them after 30 seconds, between 30 and 59, they're going to go back to 0, but the minutes are going to move by 1 up. Now, another thing that you can do while in this seconds reset is clear the connection between the uh, watch and the phone. So in case you have problems connecting your watch to the phone, make sure to clear this. By, and to do so, you press and hold the light button while the seconds are flashing like this. So you press and hold and the watch is going to say clear the pairing. And it just cleared. So it's in a way a reset of the of the watch memory. And you can also do uh, that the same thing for the app inside the app. But you have to do both if you, wanna, if you want a true pairing reset. Pressing the mode button again is gonna take us, take us to the hours. And now you can move up, you can move down. We'll leave it like this. Pressing the mode again, you can move again up and down with the minutes. And you also have the option of speed scrolling by pressing and holding the button. Okay, pressing the mode button again asks us for the year. Again, you can go up, you can go down. Pressing the mode takes us to the month. Again, up, down, and pressing it again takes us to the date. Again, you can go up, you can go down. Now, the day of the week is calculated automatically, so the watch is not gonna ask you that. However, there are other things that we need to set up in this adjusting screen. So pressing the mode, the mode button again is going to take us to the 12 or 24 hour selection. So if we leave it like this, it's going to display military time. If we leave it like this, we toggle it to 12 hour display, it's going to use the AM and PM indicator. Since I like military time, we're going to leave it at 24. Pressing the mode button again, and this is one of the unique features or very rarely found on G-Shocks, which is one that I really love, is that you can change uh, change the date display, whether you want the watch to display date, month, or month, date. Since in Europe we use date, month, we will leave it like this. But you toggle it with the lower button again. So this is going to be month and date, uh, month and date, which is US type, and this is European type. So let's leave it like this. Pressing the mode button again, and this watch also offers uh, several languages for the date display. So you have English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Russian, and back to English. We'll leave it in English. Again, you toggle it with the lower button. Pressing the mode button again, the watch is going to ask us whether you want the key tone to be on, so when you press the buttons, they make a sound, or you can mute it by pressing the lower button to the mute function. And you're going to have this little tone crossed out and when the mute function is on. Let's put it back to key tone. Pressing the mode button again, asks us for the light duration. And this can be two for two seconds and four for four seconds. Since this one has that cool fade in, fade out, I advise you to keep it at four because it looks cooler and it gives you more time to read the time. Press in the mode button again. The watch asks you about the receiving. And here you can turn off the automatic reception between the watch and the phone. In case you're on an airplane or in a hospital or any other location where you're not supposed to use radio and Bluetooth. So to turn it off, you simply press the lower button and now the watch is not going to automatically connect to your phone. Let's put it back to on. Pressing the mode button again, the watch asks you about the power save. Now if you leave the power save on and you can again toggle it with the lower button, if you leave it at on, it actually has two levels of power save. The first power save is going to uh, kick in between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. as long as you're not touching the watch for more than 60 minutes. And it's going to turn off the screen. And it's going to stay like that until it, it's exposed to light or in, uh, in, until you use the watch. However, if you don't use the watch for the next six days and it's still kept in the dark, 
the watch is going to shut down all functions except internal timekeeping. So it's no longer going to be connecting to your phone or the atomic tower. But that's only if you store it in complete darkness, which is something I would really avoid as it can damage the battery long term. OK, let's leave it at on. And pressing the mode button again takes us back to the home time selection. So if you missed anything or set up something wrong, by using the mode button, you simply cycle until you go back to that value. Now to exit the adjusting screen, you press the mode button again, uh, the adjust button again, and there you have just adjusted the time and everything manually. Now the next thing that, and like I said, once you do it like this and you've set up the home, the home city, this watch is now going to act like any solar atomic G-Shock. So from now on, the watch is going to be connecting every night up to five times. It's going to try up to five times. As soon as it makes a successful connection, it's going to stop the next, uh, the next ones in the row. And you're going to have this RCVD display here that's, that you're going to see in a couple of minutes showing you that the watch was successful at the night's reception. Now, if you want to ma initiate a manual atomic reception, all you have to do is, while in the home screen, press and hold this button for more than three seconds. So let's do it now. So it, it will do an automatic atomic reception, and you can do a manual atomic reception. So let's press and hold and release. And now the watch is trying to connect to the atomic tower, and you have this RCVD blinking right here. Once it connects to the tower and it can take up to 10 minutes for it to get all the time data. It's going to have the RCVD displayed for the next 24 hours. Since we set it up for Hong Kong, it means that this one is now tuned for the Chinese tower. Since we're in Europe, this is not going to work. It's going to fail. So to stop it, you can manually stop it by simply pressing any of the buttons. So this was the atomic reception. The next reception that can set up the time and everything is the mobile link. And now the first time when you're doing it, naturally you have to install the app and turn on the Bluetooth. So since I already have the app installed and we have the Bluetooth, when you start the app the first time, and it has to be this one, the G-Shock Connected, since there are a couple of apps, but you want this one. So once you start the app the first time, it's going to ask you what your model of the watch is. And we want to select GWB5600. So as you can see, this is the, if you're using the metal one, then you're just going to select the GMWB5000. So once you select the GWB5600, all you have to do is hold the mode button for more than three seconds in the home, in the, in the home time. So press and hold and release. And this is one of three types of connection to the phone. And now it just said register this watch to this phone and I clicked and now the watch is gonna do the initial pairing. Now this, like I said, is one of three types of connections and it just connected. And as you can see, it already corrected the time. So now it's showing the correct time and the correct time zone. So 1744, Monday, 1712. Eh, 1744 Monday it's not showing the date because it's now connected now the watch is going to stay connected to the app for any predetermined time three minutes five minutes or ten minutes if you're not touching anything if you're touching anything then naturally it's going to extend it so this was the first pairing and this type of connection where you hold this for three seconds is also going to be used whenever you want to set up things on the app and then send them to the watch. So this is what I like to call the full connection. There are also a couple of other connections, two more, and we're just going to disconnect this by pressing any of the buttons. Now the second type of connection is used for the flight log function and also for time only. So if let's say you land somewhere else and your phone picks up the time, the correct time of the, of the local time there, but your watch is still showing the wrong data, you don't have to wait for the automatic connection that happens four times a day, but you can initiate a time only connection by simply pressing this button. So you just press and release and the watch is going to connect to your phone, get the correct time, date and everything and disconnect from your phone. And that's it. On the other hand, once you do that, the phone is going to store the location where you're at at that given time and it's going to store the location and time when you were at that location so you can later view it at the map which is 
That's why it's called the flight log function. So in a way, you can save waypoints by pressing this whenever you, because whenever you do a manual reception, the watch is going to get the time, but the app is going to get the time and location stored in memory. And I don't know how many of these waypoints you can store, but I believe a lot. So let's do that manual reception. So simply press it. And now you're waiting for the watch to connect. Once it's successful, it's going to write successful and that's it. So if let's say we landed somewhere else and the phone changed the time, that's it. And you just changed the time again. And as you can see, as soon as you do a successful connection to your phone, you're going to have this RCVD displayed as well. Okay, that's the second type of connection. And the third and final type of connection is the phone finder. So in case you lose your phone, you don't know where it is, as long as you have the Bluetooth running on your phone and you don't have to be in the app, and as long as you have, as long as the watch is within the range, you can initiate the the phone finder by pressing and holding this for more than five seconds. So we're just going to do it right now. And even if the phone is put to silent, which this one is, uh, once you initiate a phone finder, it's going to ring at maximum volume just so that you can find your phone. So to do it, press and hold, still hold, and there. And now it's going to try to connect to the phone and initiate that ringing at maximum volume there and once it does it you can stop it by pressing the button on the phone or on your watch and that's it so this is the three types of connection and three types of setting up your watch and your time now to conclude this home screen pressing this is going to take you through different modes pressing and holding is going to initiate the first pairing and also that connection where you set things up on the app or should I say the full connection. Pressing this is not going to do anything. However, pressing and holding is going to take you to the manual, uh, manual adjustment of the functions. This button has three functions, if you remember. So if you just press it and release, it's going to connect to the phone to get the data, the time and date data. And it's also going to be used for the flight log function where it's going to store your location on the phone. Pressing and holding for three seconds is going to initiate the manual atomic reception. And pressing and holding for five seconds is going to initiate the phone finder. So this button actually has three functions. And lastly, we have the light function. So when you press the light button, naturally the watch is going to light up. However, if you press and hold while in the home screen for more than three seconds, you're going to activate the automatic light. As you can see, we just you have this LT display. What that means is that if you put the watch level and tilt it to your face, the face is going to automatically light up, but only in the dark, since this watch is solar and it knows when it's in the dark. So to save the battery, it's not going to do it if there's enough light for you to read the screen, which is a pretty cool function. To turn off the auto light, you again press and hold the light button, like so. Anyways, this is pretty much it when it comes to the home screen. So now we're going to move on to other modes of this watch. Okay, the next function that we're going to cover is the world time. And the world time function on this watch works slightly different than compared to other G-Shocks. What I mean by that is that you don't have, I mean, you do have the 40 something cities that can be expanded up to 300 when you use the app. But it's not just that. On regular G-Shocks, you simply cycle through these cities or these time zones through, I believe, 30 something time zones by pressing the lower button. However, on this, you have five pre-selected time zones, as you can see, three, four, five. And by pressing the lower button, you keep cycling between these five. And then each one of these five can be set to any time zone that's available on the watch or any city available on the watch. Or like I said, if you use the app to any of the 300 cities, this is pretty cool because you can put the most frequently used time zones that you actually use and that makes cycling through them very fast and very convenient. Unlike a regular uh, world time function on other G-Shocks where you want where you have to scroll through all the time zones to get to the one that you desire. Now, like I said, to 
toggle between these five, you simply press the lower button. Once you select one, let's say number one, you can set it up to any time zone you want by pressing and holding the adjust button. And the watch is going to enter the adjusting mode. And as you can see, the UTC is currently the one that we're using as number one, which is indicated by this little, uh, I don't know how you call that, hash mark or whatever you want. And now by using these two buttons, you can go due east and you can go due west to select the time zone that you want to use as the number one. So let's say if we select Kabul, you can also, while in this adjusting mode, switch the DST to automatic on or off by pressing the mode button and then toggling with the lower button. So auto, off or on, and as you can see, the time changes accordingly. Once you've set up the desired time zone for the pre-selected time for the pre-selected part and you want to exit, you simply press the adjust button. And now we've placed Kabul as the pre-selected number one. And like I said, to toggle, you press all these buttons. Naturally, this watch also offers the time swap function, meaning that let's say we put Hong Kong as number four, and now we're leaving our location, which is Paris or Zagreb for Hong Kong. Once we land there, we don't want to view, once we get to the uh, to, to Hong Kong, we want to switch the time zone, the home time and the local time, so that the alarms that we use are actually connected to the local time. To do the, home sw uh, the time swap function, you simply press these two simultaneously, like so. And now, as you can see, now the world time is actually our home time and our uh, and the local time, which is Hong Kong, has moved to become our home time. As you can see, it's already Tuesday, 107 after midnight. To switch back, you simply go back to the world time and press this again. And now again, Zagreb has become our home time and Hong Kong has become the world time. Like so. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the world time. Now, all this can be also done within the app and it's much more convenient and much simpler. But since it's so intuitive, I won't be showing it to you because trust me, once you connect to the app and go to the world time, it's a lot easier. You simply type in the city that you want and you can sw uh, s uh, select on which one of these pre-selected ones you want to store it. And then you can just sw switch between home time and local time. And whatever changes you make in the app, they're not going to be stored at the watch immediately, but you have to press send settings to the watch for the app to actually change things on the watch. Okay, that's it. Moving on. The next function is the alarm. And this watch comes with five alarms with one being a snooze, this one. And you can also change the SIG or the hourly chime while you're here. Now to to turn any of these on, so including the hourly chime or any of the alarms, you simply go to the desired alarm with by using this button and press the adjust button. And now as you can see, we've just turned on the alarm and you get this retro inspired alarm symbol. If we turn on the hourly chime, also by pressing the adjust, you get this little symbol and now the watch is gonna beep every full hour. Let's turn it off. And if we turn on the snooze alarm, we're also going to have this SNZ display. Now, as long as you have any of the alarms turned on, so one or two or whatever, you're going to have this alarm symbol right here. Now, naturally, as with all G-Shocks, you can uh, adjust any of the alarms to any desired time. To do so, you select the alarm that you want to that you want to turn on, that you want to adjust and even if it's turned off it's automatically going to turn on as soon as you start adjusting it to adjust it you simply press and hold the adjust button and the watch is going to ask you about the hours when you want the alarm to ring pressing the mode button is going to ask you about the minutes again you select the minutes that you want the alarm to go off and press the adjust button to exit the setting and now this alarm is going to go off at 305 and naturally you can turn it on or off with the adjust button. Okay, that's it when it comes to the alarm. Again, I'm not gonna show you how to do it in the app because it's very self-explanatory and very intuitive. Pressing the mode button again, we come to the stopwatch. And this is a regular 24 hour stopwatch with one 100th of a second precision. So you can start it with the lower button, you can stop it and you can reset it with the adjust button. You can also do the split times. So you start with the lower button and to do a split time, you simply press the adjust button 
which is going to freeze the screen, but the stopwatch keeps measuring in the background. Once you've taken the note of this result, you press this button to unfreeze the screen. And the watch can also do the first and second place. So if you have two runners, when the first one goes through the finish line, you press the adjust button. When the second one goes through the finish line, you press the start stop button. Now, once you write down the time of the first runner, you press the adjust button and it's going to take you to the time of the second runner and pressing it again is going to reset the stopwatch. That's it when it comes to the stopwatch. Pressing the mode button again, we've come to the countdown timer function. Now here, this watch has a 24 hour countdown timer that can be settable down to the nearest minute. To set up the countdown timer, you press the adjust button and the watch is going to ask you about the hours. If you leave it at zero, it's going to start at 23.59.59. And you can move it, like say, to, to two hours. And pressing the mode button is going to ask you about the minutes. Again, you can move it to any time you want. Once you've... Oh, it can be settable down to the second. Okay, that's cool. Once you've set it up to the desired time, you press the adjust button to exit the countdown timer adjusting mode. And now you can start the timer. And once it reaches zero, it's going to beep. You can also stop it and you can reset it. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the countdown timer. Pressing the mode button again takes us back to the home screen. Now, the final function that I want to cover is something that happens in the app only. And that's called the reminder. And I'm also going to show you the flight log function. But first, let's cover the, the reminder function. The reminder function works pretty much like the alarm but it's something that's going to be on displayed on the watch the whole day. And it's used for birthdays, anniversaries, and such. And you can store up to five reminders, and you can write down the text that you want the watch to display. And the cool thing about the reminder is not only that you're going to have this REM written here, which is, again, a throwback to the first and original G-Shock, but also, well, if you when you have the reminder turned on for this date, when you press the light button, the watch is going to display the time with the fade in, fade out function. And once it fades out, it's going to blink with the red LED to tell you that I have something uh, scheduled for today. So it's pretty cool. So now let's switch to the app to actually see that reminder function. That, And we come to the reminder that I just talked about. Once in the reminder, as you can see, you can put... I did a test one and you can set any re which one of these uh, uh, how you want to set it up. So you can put it to on or off. You can enter up to 18 characters for the for the for the text. So let's put test test number 2. Okay, date December 17th, repeat settings only once every one year if you want to do an anniversary or a birthday you can do every month whatever you want let's put it every year period december 17th to december 17th or you can put it to the day of the week so that you can have a reminder for each day of the week we'll leave it like this and send settings to the watch the day of the week is not set just a second what is today? Today is Monday. Okay. Let's put it. Send settings to the watch. Setting completed. And like I said, you can do up to five of these reminders and turn them on or off. So now once we've set up the reminder, and now once you press the light button, like I said, you're going to see this. The light goes on and off. And... I don't know if you saw that. Maybe I'll repeat this with the with the light turned off. So just a second. Okay, so now with the light turned off, we turn on the light. And once the light turns off, it's going to blink in red color to tell us that we have a reminder set for today, which I find pretty cool. And now when you want to see the text for the reminder, while in the home screen, you simply press the adjust button and it's going to write down the test, the text that we've written. We wrote test two. And as you can see, it's going to scroll through this little screen. So pretty cool function that I'm just uh, sad that it doesn't work without the app. So you have to have the app installed and the watch paired for it to work. And now finally, 
the one thing that I wanted to show you, which is something I showed you about the watch already, which is if you have problems connecting or everything or something is acting funny, including the app or the watch, I already showed you how to reset the watch by going into the adjusting mode and going to the seconds. And once in the seconds, you press and hold this until it says clear bearing there. However, you also have to do it in the app by going into the app and going into the settings. And once in the settings, you select Casio, the one that you have paired, and you go to the delete pairing registration to delete any pairing data for the watch. This is effectively you resetting the app and that was resetting the watch. And that should fix any issues that you have. Now, I forgot to mention that in the app, all those settings that we did in the manual set up on the watch are visible right here when you go into the settings. As you can see, watch display settings, which is 12, 24 hour display this is the operation sound or the mute function then the time for the connection three five ten minutes time adjustment whether you want it to turn on or off which is that syncing light settings two seconds four settings power setting saving settings on or off and dst whether you want it all auto on or off so all these settings are also available in the app and are much easier to use when you use the app so i really advise you if you're going to buy this watch i mean you bought it for its Bluetooth connectivity, make sure to pair it to the phone because it's gonna make it make setting it up a lot easier. However, this tutorial does cover both watch only and these settings in the app so that you can really choose whatever you want, whichever one you want. And since we're in the app, I'm gonna show you just a couple of things like you can see this uh, these are the five pre-selected time zones kabul tehran paris hong kong new york and now you can select each one of these and change it and you have the home time is zagreb and to switch between the two you simply press this button so it's pretty easy i'm uh, pretty self-explanatory one more thing that i forgot to mention is that the battery level is not visible on the watch it's only going to show you the battery level once it gets to low then it's going to display on the watch low however to see the battery level in real time you have to connect it to the app and it's going to be constantly displayed right here okay moving on this is the time and place this is the flight long function so whenever you press this button to do the manual time receive like i said it's going to store your uh, location as well so we can put last place and it's going to take us to what when we just did it the other way so this is my house and when we did the manual receive at december 17th at 1746 which was about half an hour ago it has just stored that and you can go to back and then go to all places for all the previous ones but since we did a reset and all reset when we started this tutorial this is going to be the only one if we didn't there were a couple of locations okay let's go back so that's when it comes to this and now we come to the utility and over here we have the alarm the timer and the reminder now we'll just go shortly into the alarm so as you can see alarm one two three four five it's like setting up an alarm on a smartphone so alarm two you can turn it on or off here and as soon as you change something as you can see now the watch is uh, the app is asking you do you want to send settings to the watch and, and unless you press that the settings are not going to be changed on the on the watch and as usual you can set it up to any time you want that's it let's go back since we're here let's go into the timer as well so the timer is like i said as you can see it's displaying what the timer is set on the watch and now you can again change it and put it to whatever time you want and again set settings to the watch in case you want that anyways that's it when it comes to to the tutorial of the gwb5600 and also the gmwb5000 so i really hope you enjoyed and found it useful if you did Please like and subscribe by pressing this button right this button right here and until the next video bye